In the last video we created a model of a straight line. I'd like to extend the model to make it a bit more useful. So the first thing I'm going to do is to mark this table and just move it down a little bit. Instead of M I'm going to put M1 and instead of C I'm going to put C1. And then I'm going to have another gradient which is M2 and another y-intercept which is C2. Okay, and into this I'll put a couple of values, I don't know, 2 and 4 or something, it doesn't really matter what they are. And now I'm going to create, we'll call that column Y1 and we'll call this column Y2. So now into this cell I'm going to put the similar calculation to the, to the Y1 column. So I'm going to say that this is equal to N2 times X plus C. Okay, and I'm going, to, I'm going to put dollars in front of the C values to make them constant. And now I'm going to drag this cell down to get a copy. Let's just check. We've got minus 4 times 2 is minus 8, plus 4 is minus 4. That's good. And then down at this end we've got 3 times 2 is 6, plus 4 is 10. Yeah, so that's, that's worked out all right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this second line to the graph. So I right click on the graph and I want to select data. I'm going to add a new series and the X values are going to be the same X values as the first line and the Y values are going to be our new Y values here. Okay, so we'll okay that and okay that. So now we've got a model of a straight line and we have an intersection. Now I'd like to do a little bit of algebra. Our first line is y is equal to m1x plus c1. Our second line is y is equal to m2x plus c2. Both equations are equal to y, so we can say that m1x plus c1 is equal to m2x plus c2. So I'm going to move, I'm going to move that term onto the left hand side and that term onto the right hand side. So I can write m1 minus m2x is equal to c2 minus c1. Okay, now I'm going to divide both sides by m1 minus m2. So now the x value at the point of intersection is c2 minus c1 over m1 minus m2. Using xi into this equation, I can now write that the yi is equal to m1 xi plus c. And then as a check, I can have the same yi is equal to m2 xi plus c2. Now I'm going to put these into the spreadsheet. The next thing I want to do is to calculate the point of intersection. So let's make this a little bit smaller. So the x value of the point of intersection is given by c2 minus c1, so that's c2 minus c1 divided by m1 minus m2. Close the bracket. So there's our, the x value of our point of intersection. The y value of the point of intersection is given by, that's equal to m1 times the x value plus c1. Okay. And the sanity check, I'll call it SC, is equal to, I'm just going to use the second equation, so that is equal to m2 times x plus c2. Okay, these two values are the same, so I can be confident the line is okay. What happens if the gradients are the same? Let's put a 2 in there. Now we've got a problem because the lines don't intersect and we get this division by 0, which is not very elegant. So let's make a small change here. So instead of the calculation that we've got, I'm going to change this to a conditional statement. So I'm going to say if brackets m1 equals m2, then let's print the word none. Otherwise, do the calculation in the way that we've done it before. Okay, that says none now. Let's change the, uh, the y value as well. So we're going to say if, if m1 equals m2, print the word none, 
otherwise do the calculation close that bracket okay and we better do it for the final one so we're saying if m1 equals m2 print the word non otherwise do the calculation right so that's more elegant isn't it so if this is a different value let's say it's three um, then we calculate the points of intersection but if there is no point of intersection it doesn't fall over it doesn't give us a divide by zero error it says none so let's change the gradient to I don't know three shall we say and then change the gradient change the y-intercept to something very different so say minus 20 right there we go so now the point of intersection is a long way from the graph it's x is 24 well there's 4 so x it's way off the right hand side of the graph so what I want to do now is I want to change this value here and I'm, what I'm going to change it to is I'm going to say that that is equal to a function called round with the x value with no decimal places because I'd like it to be an integer and then I'm going to say minus 3 so we're going to start 3 less than the point of intersection okay so now what happens is that the point of intersection is now shown on the graph and not only is it shown on the graph it is always shown on the graph so if I change the point of intersection so there it is at minus 6 and if I make that minus 3 instead of plus 3 the graph gets recalculated and the point of intersection is always shown on the graph so now we've got two straight lines we're calculating the point of intersection for any line here's the point of intersection and we're making sure that the point of intersection is shown on the graph so we've gone from a very simple model of a straight line to something that's actually quite useful Thank you.